All right, for our fourth assignment, we just turned it in. For our fifth assignment, we are doing animation for the first time, which is taking the two dimensions that we've been designing in raster imaging and now making them move by timing out sequential images so that we decide as the creator how quickly you see one image before it changes to another image, to another image. They're just quick slideshows. So I'm going to make a new folder for it. I'm going to call it assignment five because the big theme of animation, no matter what form it takes, GIF animation like what we're doing, flash animation, um, 3D animation, hand-drawn animation, it requires a lot of organization and forethought. Right? It's not an improvisational art form, sadly. It can be in little ways, but in big storytelling ways, you have to have a plan. So we're going to make our plan. The plan for animation for any kind of visual narrative in two dimensions is called a storyboard. So storyboarding has a lot of different conventions. If you were to major in, in illustration, especially in entertainment design, you would take at least a whole class on storyboarding and the, the communication tools of panning arrows and camera moves and dolly shots and zooms that they have. That is so that your storyboard image can communicate with professionals and then be translated by directors and by DPs and by um, cinematographers into a scene. But we're in luck. This is our introduction to animation, introduction to storytelling with raster imaging digitally. So we are the people that are, need to understand our own storyboard. So you can use any kind of nomenclature you want, any kind of notes you want, but I require you to do a nine panel storyboard sketch, no more detailed than this, to show your animation. So if you want details of what the assignment is, beyond what I'm telling you here, you can always look at the assignment sheet in Canvas, right? It will break it down. But let me break it down here for you. I require you to use one assignment or exercise that you've already created as part of an animation that features a transformation. So that it means it's different at the beginning than it is at the end. It is not enough just to make one thing move because moving is called a movement test. So if I just show my creature that I designed for assignment two, and I just show it flap its wings and open and close its beak and stick out its tongue, that is animation, but it is not a transformation, right? It is just a movement test. And it's great for a screen test to see if that character's movement is believable, but it doesn't engage me as a story. So what does a story need? A story needs a beginning, a middle, and an end. And in order for there to feel like there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, something has to happen, right? That changes it from what it is at the beginning to what it is at the end. The other things you need to, to tell a story, a narrative, you need the, the viewer to pay attention to something. And that thing is dynamic. It's the thing that changes, right, from beginning, middle, to end. So we're going to take that thing and we're going to call it your character. That character can be a tree, right? It can be a paper clip on a desk. But if that's the thing that changes, then it is the character in that animation. So in Jurassic Park, that this was, um, I think, a practical effect. But now if they do it, they do it digitally. You have the little glass of water. And animated in the water, you see these little spirals, these impact blasts. That water is the character in that scene. It's the thing that was smooth, then got <laughs> disrupted. That tells the story. The tree, if something happens to the tree, you know, it, it loses its leaves and then it grows new ones. It becomes the character. It transforms. If it gets hit by lightning, you know, we see the tree on fire. It transforms. The other thing you need is a setting. So that character doesn't exist just in empty space. We as the viewer always want to know where the character is. So even if we just make it blank white space behind, we as the viewer want to know what that setting is. So if I draw Garfield and I just put him in a blank background, you assume Garfield's inside because Garfield's almost always inside, right? But if I put Garfield in a scarf, 
you're going to assume, oh, Garfield's outside. Because he doesn't usually have a scarf. And where do you use a scarf? Use it outside. And so then in the next panel, if I animate a snowball hitting Garfield, it makes sense, right? Even if I didn't show the setting. So what are the two main types of storyboard panels? Well, you can see them here in the demonstration. And you'll see them in the past student work. One main type that's often the first panel you'll draw is called an establishing shot. This is the first time your audience sees it. We're not trying to be too clever here. We're doing a direct storytelling, right? So we have to establish our things pretty quickly. So you might choose to establish your setting first. First show that it's outside and it's snowing then show Garfield and introduce the character, right? So another way to establish is to introduce. You introduce a character. So my establishing shot here, this is for a past example, uh, establishes my setting and my character at the same time. It shows my character in the setting right away, right? Then you have action shots. You only draw a keyframe on your storyboard for each thing that's important, right? So I'm going to have one action that shows him closing his beak and flapping his wings. That doesn't mean it's only going to take one animation frame to show that. It's just the only thing I need to draw, right? Then he starts to shuffle his shoulders and tilt his head. That's a new action. It requires a new keyframe, a new storyboard frame. Now I start to animate an action to the setting. You don't need to do that. You can have just a setting that you animate. You can have just a character you animate but there needs to be some sort of transformation. So if I just animated the setting and the clouds start to darken and then lightning strikes, then the, the clouds are my character, right? So the clouds darken, it gets dark and stormy. The sun starts to break through. Then I introduce a new character. Ooh, it's no, nothing to say you can't have multiple interactions here. And that character is a T-Rex. Did I design a T-Rex as an assignment? No, I did not. You can introduce new things, right? This is a GIF animation. It's going to be a web quality. It's perfect for sharing with friends. It is not something you're going to sell, right? So what does the T-Rex do? What's the action? The T-Rex eats the bird. And then I clear out the setting. Then the T-Rex leaves. This is another thing you can think of. Though it's not required, it's much more satisfying. Try to think of your beginning, middle, and end so that it is set up at the end to reset to the beginning. That way we can play it on a loop and it won't just do a jump cut from the end to the beginning because these animations can go quite quickly. So that is nine frames that tell a pretty simple story. I'm limiting you to nine because I don't want you to get needlessly ambitious, right? Too late. <laughs> because it takes work, right? And we're gonna add a lot of things in. So what does that become? So we take our storyboard and those become what we call final storyboards. But this is done after you're finished with your animation by taking screen grabs of your final frames, right? So let's see if, if I was making a comic, you know, would this work? It's not the most interesting comic because all the panels are exactly the same size. But I introduced the scene. I've already deviated from my sketch. Because I figured, oh, I'm going to introduce the scene, and then I'll introduce the character. Right? So that's the change there. I'm showing the character opening its mouth and flapping its wings. Now the setting is a, a character, right? The setting is getting darker and changing. Then the T-Rex comes in, eats the bird. Those are from my final animation, but my final animation is a lot more than nine frames. But... The ideal animation makes sense this way, right? It makes sense as a storyboard. The beginning is different than the middle, is different than the end. And each panel shows a change. It shows a change in the camera move. It shows a change in a movement, in a character, in the setting. But when it's animated all together, you get a new formal element of the illusion of movement. Oh, where'd it go? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Well, let's play it right here. So first you get the camera move, which introduces the character. We get some sound effects provided by the room. Then it gets cloudy. It storms. 
Then the T-Rex comes in, eats them up. Right? So over and over again, this is the process. There's all kinds of transformations. This poor guy is on just an empty background, but he explodes. Right? This one, the tree is the character. And the lightning hits it, right? Transforms it. This is a nice little kind of advertisement for Firefox. Right? Transformation. Very commercial applications. So you can use any assignment you like. No. But you need to incorporate one of your past assignments. But it doesn't mean you can't incorporate other stuff too. All right, so what am I going to do this semester? Well, these are my different assignments, right? I limit myself for this simply so I can show you all the variety you have open to you, because it's up to you to use any compositing techniques you like, any rastering techniques you like. You're even allowed to paint on top of this if you want, as long as you're compositing at least one of your past assignments as part of it. Even we have some really great student examples that use their shape composition and animate with those layers, right? So you are open to do whatever you want. What I will usually do is use my creature and use my setting so that you can see how professional compositing works with animation. So if I use that, then I'm going to use my assignment one setting. So let me just open up my JPEGs in preview. And I'm going to use my assignment to creature. This is just what I'm choosing to do. You can sketch and design whatever you want. That's my setting. That's my character. I can add new things, right? I've already blended these once in assignment three, right? And if I want, I can play with this cloud in assignment four that we just finished. So a very simple animation might be, I just have my character transform into a cloud and back again. That actually meets all the requirements. But it doesn't show you enough of the different options and techniques for me to do it as a demo. Do you guys think you understand the parameters of the assignment? All right, excellent. So now comes the fun part, which I want you to do as homework and have in your sketchbook. Using those different elements, you are going to sketch your storyboard, sketch it in pencil, and allow yourself to change it and have new ideas. Right? It's a work in progress. So we're gonna I'm gonna open up a new sketchbook. I'm just gonna use a simple brush on a new layer. This is the seam of my sketchbook, right? Think of this as the spine. Because I might put ideas over here. Let's sharpen this brush up. And I'll put my storyboard over here. So what do I want? I want nine frames. I say on the assignment sheet, you can use up to 12. That's for the more ambitious among you. But the reason I like nine is that nine looks very nice as its own little portfolio entry to show that you actually meant to animate what you animated, <laughs> that you have creative control. Do these panels need to be perfect? Not at all. They're just for you. But you are going to reference them later as you build your story, because animation is all about organization and knowing what, what you're doing, knowing what you're heading towards, having a plan. So this is our plan. GIF animations are also not usually the tidiest things. So I'm not worried about everything looking so perfectly believable. This is the more, most playful and um, 